This is a part two to creating a portal in Apple Motion. If you want to watch part one, you can see it right here. Today, we'll be focusing on creating the appearance effect of the portal, and there's some extra stuff I added to make it look that much more real in our video. First thing I want to do is actually integrate this portal even a little bit more into the scene. So what we're going to do is actually create a circle, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a random circle, and I'm going to pull it out of that group it placed it in and put it at the very, very top of everything. We're going to want to make sure that 3D is activated. Then we're going to go into our inspector and find the outline setting. We'll go ahead and disable that. And then we'll just go ahead and change the fill over to a black color. Now, because it's 3D, we can actually go into our property settings and rotate it on the X axis. And we'll rotate it by 90 degrees so that it's completely flat. Now I'm going to change my camera angle to be the front camera angle. And I'm just going to line this up with the base of the portal, just like so. So hopefully it's lined up with the actual ground of our 3D tracked environment. Now I can go ahead and go back into my active camera and we'll just need to go into the Z settings and slide this over until it's just over wherever our portal is. Now with that circle selected, we'll go into our shape settings and drag up the feather so it's got a nice soft edge. So basically we're gonna use this circle as a light catcher. So I'll call it light catcher. Now that it's there, we can go into our property settings and if I set that blend mode over to add, it's actually gonna be completely Gone. But what we can do is use a 3D light onto it, which will catch onto the surrounding scene. So let's go ahead with this group selected. We'll go into our add object and select light. Now we're going to need to drag this light over there in 3D space. It's going to need to go away in the negatives. I'm actually going to change my camera angle over to the top camera angle and then drag this up over near where our door is. Now we'll go to the front angle and make sure it's lined up vertically as well. That's looking really nice. Okay, so now we can go back into our active camera. We'll go into our light. We'll make sure it's in the same group as the light catcher and we can just bring up the intensity. Now we're gonna have to bring it up quite a bit for that light catcher to see it. But as you can see now, it's blasting this white light onto our light catcher. If I change it over to that neon blue color, it should be starting to look pretty good. Now it might be going a little bit too far back. So I'm gonna pull it, the light catcher further forward in Z space, just like so. And then again, we can continue to increase the brightness. So now our scene has this basic light catcher on the ground, but I want to add some 3D dimension to that light. So we're going to select this group and I'm just going to call this the light catcher group actually. And now in our filters, we can go into distortion and we're going to select the bump map filter. With this whole group selected, I'm going to change it over to an add blend mode. And in this bump map, we can drag in the original video. So I'll drag in the footage that was there and we can raise the amount quite a bit. Now it might be a little bit hard to see, but if I zoom in here, you can actually see how the bump map is affecting the surrounding grass and I can drag the direction and change it to a direction that looks pretty good to me that's looking all right and so now we'll zoom back out and what's great is because that's in 3d space it's going to line up with the surrounding ground so it's gonna make this door feel very integrated into our scene so that's something I wanted to add into the original tutorial but again it was just taking too long so now that we have that light catcher set up let's go ahead and work on the actual appearance effect what we're gonna wanna do is pretty simple. Go ahead and locate your group that has the portal door. Then we'll go up to filters. Under glow, we're gonna select light rays. Now you can see how cool these light rays look. They, they're giving this door a really nice look. And in fact, you could leave that on if you wanted to totally up to you. What I want to do is use this filter to make the door appear. We'll leave the amount as is for now, but we're going to set the glow down to zero. And you'll notice that that actually takes out the entire doorway, which is great because we want this to appear from nothing. So now that we've got that set, we can add a keyframe and then move forward a few frames and then set that back to what it was at. I think it was around one. So now it'll go from zero to one. So that door is slightly appearing, but we kind of wanted to have this effect of slamming into position. We can go back to the original keyframe that is set to zero. We'll drag up our amount, add a keyframe, and then move forward to the secondary keyframe in our glow parameter and set that back down to zero. So now it's going from 200 to zero, slamming in just like so. Now, another problem we have is this smoke is still visible. So we'll jump into our smoke asset and we're gonna set the opacity down to zero. We'll add a keyframe, we'll move forward, 
to the appearance and then we'll drag that up to a full 100. So that's appearing as that door is coming into frame as if it is lighting up some nice atmospheric smoke in front of the door. Now what we can do is go to our light catcher group and we'll go back to that original keyframe. We'll select our light, we'll add a keyframe, move forward to the end and add another keyframe. We'll go back to the original keyframe and set that to zero. So now this light is appearing as the door appears, which is gonna make it feel a lot more realistic. And we might even wanna bring it in a few frames earlier. So I'll just click and drag on this keyframe on the timeline to the left hand side so that it's starting to appear as that door is appearing. And I think it would be really cool if it was actually even brighter when it initially appeared. So we could go in, add a keyframe to make it much brighter, just like so. So now it's starting off super bright on the ground there and then shrinking back down to its normal brightness. Another problem we have is this cutout is actually still visible. So that's very easily fixed. We'll just go find our original mask. We'll go into the properties of that mask. And because this mask is actually based off of the alpha channel, we'll set the opacity down to zero. Then we'll go forward to where the door starts to appear somewhere in here. We'll add a keyframe. And then as the door completes, we'll drag that opacity capacity all the way up to a full 100. And I think that really adds to the magic of this door because you can see what was originally behind it and then you can see that it shifts into this beach scene. So we now have this door appearing into the frame. So there were a couple other things I did over in Final Cut Pro to really make this effect look good. So we're going to go ahead and go to share, export movie, and we'll just call this portal appearance and we can drop this into wherever we want. So now this is going to export that video. You can actually click on this icon here to see how far along the export actually is. So once this is done, we'll go back over into Final Cut Pro. So what I wanna do is add some real impact to this door appearing. We'll go ahead and look up the earthquake shake and apply that onto our clip. Now we'll go ahead and set the amount down to zero. We'll find the initial part of the animation. We'll click to add a keyframe on the amount and then we'll just drag that way up. And then as the impact is made, we'll drag it back down to zero. And the last thing I'm gonna to apply to this scene to make it look really good is a LUT. So I'm gonna just apply the custom LUT effect and apply my friend Dylan John's LUTs. I chose his bolder look and it looked really, really good. I'll try and have a link to this down in the description, but we'll go ahead and press play. And now we've got this portal appearance effect built directly in Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro. So hopefully this was helpful to you. And if it was, you might really be interested in this video where I show 10 things that I really wish I had known as a beginner in Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.